Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to be having a look at the ultimate modelling range of sanders. So this is the range of sanders myself and Lisa at umpretail.com. Um, I've got a couple of pre-packaged products here and I've got every single one of our sanders loose over there. When we go overhead in a minute, we're going to have a look through them all, talk through them all, their uses, their grits, how to use them. I've got a couple of kits to demo them on as well. And after we're done, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments on YouTube and I'll answer them. Or if you've got any queries or complaints, email us at sales at umpretail.com and we will sort out any problems you have or any queries you have that way. So there we are. Um, like I say, we get, often get asked, um, what grit is each sander? What should I be using it on? And how do I use it? So I'm hoping to address those questions today and help you out in the proper way of using our sanders um, and getting the best out of them, basically. So what we'll do, we'll go overhead, we'll grab some uh, sanders, go through them, and then show them in use as well. Okay, so we're over the bench. Let's go through some of the sanders and see what we've got. So we'll start with our starter pack of sponge sanders. In there, there's a 100, 180, 220, 220, 400, 800, 240, 1200, and our buffer. So that is the sanders. So this one here is the 100, 180. It's a sponge sander. It's very coarse. Coarser on one side to the other. You can feel the 100 to the 180 by feeling it with your finger. Uh, obviously, the 100 is the coarser side. Now, myself and Lee nicknamed this the chainsaw. It's a very coarse, rough sander. Uh, if you need to remove masses of plastic or, say, resin, um, very quickly, this is the ideal tool for it. Not really usable use for day-to-day -day sanding as such for removal of large amounts of material very very handy sander the next one up is our uh, 220 220 gray sponge this is one of my go-to sanders for everyday use uh, it's a beautiful grit it's a nice shape as well i'll explain the shape in a minute and uh, yeah that is one of my go-to sanders that's a 240 uh, sorry 220 220 we've then got our 240 1200 so the 240 is the grittier side the 1200 is the smoother side again sponged not quite as much as the gray a little bit thinner um and again that nice ergonomic shape which i'll explain in a minute we then have our 400 800 now whilst this is sponged it's a bit less spongy than the others now we've done this to give uh, the available grit and just a different style of sander as well not quite a thinny stick not quite a sponge a little in between still that same ergonomic shape and of course you can feel the grittier side to the smoother literally by touch that's 800 that's the 400. You can feel it. I can see most of them by eye. Once you know the sander, you will know it forever. It's really, really easy. So that's those. And then, of course, we have our buffer. So um, this is the ultimate buffer. This is the buffing side. This is the polishing side. Blue one side. You might have some of the older ones. I've still got them. They're green. Uh, exactly the same, uh, just a different color. So this is for final finishing. Hit it with the blue side first and then polish it up. Get some squeaking going with the white and jobs done. So that's those. Now into our thinny stick. So in here we have a 180, a 240, a 400, 800, 1200 sponge and a buffer as well. So that is these. If I go through these in order, I will show you what we have. So... We start off first with our most coarse sander, which is our 180. So same grit as the white sponge, but in a thinny stick. So a nice shape, um, ever so slightly sponged, but nice and stiff to give all those flat edges uh, a nice even sand. Um, two different ends to this. We've got a flatter, wider end on one side. So this is removal of plastic from larger areas and then we've got a more precise point at the other and again this is so you can get into smaller areas and deal with what you need so again one uh, 180 grit so it's not quite the 100 grit of the coarser side of the white sand sponge sander but it's a 180 grit there we then move on to the 240 and again you can identify these by eye once you know them so white core black coarse is the 240 grit same shape as the white one we just looked at we then got the 400 which is the yellow cord 
So again, another one of my go-to sanders. Um, love this sander, absolutely fantastic. Um, and we'll go through use of that in a bit. But then we go to our 800, which is the orange core. Same shape again. And then our 1200, which is the smoother white core. So white core, uh, obviously got the white one, the 180, and then the two white core black ones. Coarser is the 240, smoother is the 1200. So once you can see them, they're easy to identify. They're different colors, one's blacker, one's slightly more bluey gray. So you can see the difference. We then move on to our thinning sponge. So this is a 220 grit thinning sponge in the same shape as our thinny sticks, but this is sponged just like the gray um, 220. So there we go. In a thinny stick, very, very handy sander. One of my go-to sanders yet again. Love this on car bodies. I can get right into those awkward places to clean up seams, etc. Air crack craft wing roots etc absolutely invaluable 220 grit then we move on to our thinny buffers so we've got a thin and a thick one both in the same shape just one is more sponged to the other exactly the same as the normal sponge buffer but in thinny sticks in two different thicknesses so there we go so there they outlay the actual sanders we then move on to our customizable sanders so these are able to be cut into shape so we've got the white, which is the 240 grit. We've got the yellow, which is 400. The orange, which is 800. And the white smooth, which is 1200. So exactly the same as the thinny sticks. Now these are on hard plastic. We're probably, I would say, a good millimeter, millimeter and a half thick and you can cut these into any shape you like which i'll show you in a second one of my favorites is to literally cut along the edge and get these really nice thin sheets of sand and stick um, absolutely fantastic just the right thickness you can go even thin if you want you can put them to a point wherever you want to do or you can do odd shapes let me grab a few of mine so as you can see i've done them thicker to fit in specific areas you can do them on angle you can make triangles absolutely fantastic these are and very very valuable as a sanding tool so easy to identify with other colors like i say um have a good one through them again we've got the 240 400 800 1200 nice and easy to identify and like i say to cut them very easy to cut so usage on these i would use these in areas where some of the sanders won't fit use the grit that you wish um, and cut it to shape. So if you needed, say, a triangle, just scroll on the top. You can use a ruler if you want. You can either score through and snap, like I'm about to do, or you can just keep cutting till you go through, or you can use scissors as well. But I like to score and snap like so, wiggle it, and off it comes. So there we go. We've now got a nice triangular sander with a really nice sanding point there, and that will get into any areas you need to. Um, it's plastic hard back so it's nice and stiff and it'll stay nice and flat as well the other idea I use for these anything you need to keep flat keep it on the bench run it over the top and you know it's going to stay perfectly smooth as well so these things can be cut into literally any shape you wish score snap job done or you can go literally long ways score snap and again job done invaluable sanders and these are used for any areas the others do not get into. Right, so I have an aircraft I've been building. Um, I've got all the copper in, the fuselage has been glued together, it's been left, and I now need to deal with the seam lines. So we're glued up. I don't know if it's gonna need filling yet, that'll be a job for a later date, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove these glue marks that you can see there, and any of the excess plastic that's there. So I'm gonna use a sponge on that little bit, and we'll start uh, and finish off with the buffer and then going to use one of the thinny sticks to deal with that sprue point or sprue nub whatever you want to call it there and then we can address it with the sponge sander too so I'm going to deal with that little nub first so depending on how big it is is depending on the choice it is there's quite a lot of material to remove there so I'm going to hit up with the two um, 240 grit thinny stick first now these are not files they're not a 12 inch file they don't they're not held like this you don't sand like that that's not how these are used these are a precision tool hold it in your grip like that 
put your finger behind to support it and just lightly apply pressure. Don't force it down and don't use the end of the sanders either. If you use the end, you're going to rip it and pull it back and delaminate it from the sander. So it's a case of just lightly sand, let the tool do the work, periodically check, make sure you're not going too far through, just keep sanding away until that sprue point's gone. So you can either use a precise end if you've got something that precise you're getting rid of, or you can flip it round and use a flatter end like so. You can go across, or circular motions, whichever way suits you. I normally like to just go across, like so. Now, because it's curved, keep moving the sand around so you don't get a flat spot. There we go, I'm starting to go now. Just start doing circular motions because of what we have there. Once you've used that one, got rid of most of it, go down to the 400 grit. And again, lightly sand. So you're happy with that, go to the eight. Now, as you go through the process, you will figure out what sanders you prefer to use. This is the 800, like I say. And then the 12. And there we go, touch it, feel it. It's gonna need a little bit of filling, unfortunately, so we're not gonna get it completely smooth, but we've got rid of the raised part. And I'm gonna grab my 240, uh, sorry, 220 gray sander, and I'm just gonna deal with that point there to the back here. Again, it's not held like this, you don't sand like that. Um, it's a precision sander. So, hold it gently. Now, the idea of these shapes, like I was gonna explain, it's shaped like that. It's so you can hold it in your fingers, thumb at the back, two fingers either side, and you've got a good hold of the sander. Um, it's an idea we saw, we've implemented into our sanders, and it works very, very well. There's two different ends. You've got a rounder end and a square end. Depending on where you need to get into or what you're doing, you can pick the end that you do. And hold it in the most comfortable way. It may be that way, that's the way I do it. It may be that way. Whichever way you find more comfortable, we have allowed it. We allowed the curve in there because when you're sanding, your hand naturally arcs, and that's why we did that. But like I say, don't hold them like that. It's not a file, it's a precision sander. And now we're just gonna lightly hit up that seam. Now we're not applying masses of pressure, we're not trying to burn it, get rid of it as quick as we can. We're gently sanding it away. The idea of this is to remove the seam line, not a lot of the material around it. So we're just gonna lightly hit it up. You will hear and feel it sanding. You will also see what it's doing as well. Periodically stop, have a little look what you're doing. Fingernails good, you can feel ridges or raised areas. Just take your time. Like I say, don't apply masses of pressure. If you do that and start bending the sander, you're gonna put a flat spot on your fuselage. And that's the last thing you want. So like I say, side to side or circular, whatever you wanna do, whatever feels most natural, it will work. I'm just gonna go through, take off those glue marks, which we have there. As you can see, we're right down, we've really buffed up the plastic now. Sadly, it is going to need some filling. That's nothing to do with the sander. That's uh, just part of modeling because I can see there where we've got rid of most of the glue marks and most of the seam, but we've still got a little bit left behind. So I'm going to need to do some general modeling work on this. Once you're done with the 220, uh, um, I'm going to grab the uh, 1200 now and we're just going to lightly go over this. Of course, if you want to, you can use the 220 on this as well. Sorry, 240, my bad. So this is 1200 side of the 240, 1200. What I'm doing now, I'm just equaling off all those sander marks, like he's saying. And if you see anything you're not happy with, come back and just go over it again. It's no problem at all. These can be used wet as well, no problem at all. The only one that can't is the buffer. The buffer does not like being used wet, so don't use that one wet. All the others can be. Just ensure you dry them off once you're done. 
So there we go. For the most part, that seam has gone. One or two little specks that need filling, including the sprue point, which is a common problem with aircraft modeling, but that is done. Now, cleaning the sanders, can't really sit on that one, but you can sit on that one a little bit. You're gonna get dust in all the sanders. You can rinse them under a tap, use a soft brush to clean them out, etc. For me, quick wipe on the leg, gets all the dust off and it's gone. And the sander is near spotless again. And that's what I do. My girlfriend Hannah goes mad because all my trouser legs are covered in dust. <laughs> but it's the quickest way of cleaning them. Again, with the gray one, a quick wipe on the leg, uh, pick up some fluff, but all the dust is gone. Totally clean and ready for use again. So there we go. So once you're happy that that's gone and you're happy with that, we can then come in with the buffer. Like I say, you can go back and repeat if needed, but for me, um, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna have to fill these anyway, so I'm gonna have to come back and re-sand anyway. So at this point before filling, I wouldn't bother with the buffer, but for this demonstration, I will. So we come with the blue or the green side of the buffer, depending on the age of your buffers that you've got. And we're hitting up everywhere that we sanded now, even the surrounding areas where we may just caught once or twice. We are giving her a good buff up. Again, not loads of pressure, just enough to get the job done. We're not bending the sand there, we're using the finger behind for support. Again, we're not holding it like this, we're holding it properly, like a tool. And what we're doing here is get rid of all the sander marks, and scratches, which you are gonna pick up from the sanding process. Again, feels and looks a lot smoother now. And then we come to the white side and we're gonna give it a real good buff up. Squeaking should start. Like I say, don't use these sanders wet. The buffer does not like it. It's gonna give that another go over there. I must have missed that little bit. Again, like I say, if you're not happy, you can come back in and resand. No problem at all. Once you're happy again, spin it round. And buffer up. So, like I say, not 100% perfect. I still have parts to fill uh, and properly sand, but that is the basic process of using the sander. Pick the appropriate grit. If you had a good half inch of plastic, go for something like the white 100, 180. If it's smaller part, you can go with the 240, 1200 or the um, 220 sponge and just work through the grits going from the coarsest one you've picked to the finest one you have uh, and then follow up with the buffer at the end. Now, the likes of this in here, if I was to get in there, uh, I'm not actually gonna sand it because I don't need to. Um, but if I was trying to get in there delicate, I could use a custom art or one and just, well, we'll sand a little bit. And you can just get into the edges there or any recesses underneath. I've got lots of little parts that need doing. So in here, and you just get your sander in. It's only gonna sand that one point, nothing else around it. And just work at it, go through the grits again and then come back with one of the thinny buffers and just get it in there and give it a good cut through as well so that's it so that's basically the sponges and how they should be used identifying them easy uh white 100 180 gray is the uh 220 220 black is the 240 1200 uh we've also got the flat 400 800 and of course our buffer for the final finishing as well so that's that right so let me move on to the thinny sticks Right, so here I have a couple of parts out of a car I'm currently building. So we are gonna sand the dashboard and the seat. So sprue cutters, I've got my Tamiya sprue cutters. We don't need to go right up to the part, but we go as close as we can without damaging the part at all. Like so. And then same on the seat. You don't wanna go right up with your cutters because you can leave an indentation in the plastic. There we go, there's those two parts. So. We are left with sprue points just there underneath, there and there. And on the seat, we've got one at the back just there and at the front just at the bottom. So if we deal with the seat first, if we come in with our thinnies, so I've got a full selection of thinnies here, including the sponge, which can be used on smaller parts. So sponge ones for curved surfaces because they conform to the edges. You can use the thinnies to get rid of thicker points like we did in that sprue points on the fuselage. When it comes to flat surfaces, 
unless it's rounded, do not use the sponges. If you use the sponges on hard edges, it will grip and rip the sander. By the nature, it's a sharp edge. So don't use anything that's gonna push in because it will literally rip the sander. Again, it's something that I've seen people doing and then blaming the sander, it's not. It's basically improper tool use. So we're not gonna need the sponges there. Um, what we need here though is one of our thinny sticks. So we've got our 180, our uh, 240, our 400, our 800, 1200, both our thinny buffers and our thinny sponge. We're not, probably not going to use that right now. That's the same principle as the other sponge sanders. Use it as and when it's needed to get into those areas. And uh, we will more than likely use that buffer. So for this, I have the situation, think how much plastic is there to remove? Now, I've left quite a bit on the back of that seat, as you can see. So I could probably come in with my sprue cutters and gently remove a touch more. There we go. And we've got a lot less plastic to deal with. Now, looking at that, I don't think it calls for the 240, sorry, 220. I think we can come straight in on this with the 400. Look at it, identify where you need to sand, and keep it to the flat edge. Again, don't hold it like this. That's not the way it's held. It's literally held to use precisely. So we're looking at what we've got. We've got two flat edges, one at the back, one at the top. So I'm going to start at the top. And we're going to just lightly sand it. Hardly any pressure at all. A couple of swipes and then we'll have a look. And for the most part, there's the top gone. And then we look down the back and again, keep the sander flat to the surface. A couple of swipes, have a look. A couple of swipes, have a look. And then one final one across the top. And there we go. All gone, done, dusted, cleaned up. Now, you then come in with the 800 and finish it off. Obviously, as you go through the finer grits, you get a smoother finish. And it's going to give you a better overall finish. Finish off with the 1200. Like I say, as you get used to using these sanders, you will pick your favourite way of doing it. You may skip grits um, and just have your favourite sanders that you use. Once we're happy that it's done, again, we come in. We give it a light buff. Now, what I'm doing here, because this is a sponge, I'm not going both ways. If I run that back along there, I can hear it. And so can you. Uh, that will rip the sander. So if it's got an edge, go away from it. And that's it. Don't apply too much pressure because you will round the edge. Until you're done that way. And then we're going to come in. Now, because we've got two edges this way, we've got to be a bit more careful. There's a lot less pressure. And blow it away till you're happy. Now, everything's gone. So we're going to come in with the buffer. And buff it all up. Get that nice clean plastic. And there we go, job done, perfect. We'll do exactly the same on the bottom. We've got a slightly rounded edge, so we probably could get away with using the sponge on there. Again, it's sharp this way, it's curved that way. So coming from this way, so it doesn't rip the sander. Don't press down really hard, and again, don't, I can't stress enough, don't hold them like this. It's not any control. Sanding like that is not control. And there we go, one perfectly sanded seat. We do have some ejector pin marks on the back. If I had a bit more time, I've been here for quite a while already, I would fill those in with either some uh, circular plastic discs, glue them in place, sand them off, or a bit of filler. Come in with the um, sander and take away. I will deal with those at a later date. But we'll deal with the dashboard quickly because this is quite an awkward shape. So again, we've got straight edges. They're cut nice and close. That one could probably do a little bit more. Just whip it off. There we go. And again, I'm going to come in with the 400. It doesn't require the coarseness of the uh, 220. Sorry, 240. My bad. There we go. And again, hold it nicely, support it. Now, multiple angles. We've got an angle at the front, an angle at the back, and an angle at the side. So you need to sand all three. So be light, keep an eye on what you're doing, keep stopping and checking, and once you're done, that's it, perfect. Same on this side, just a quick sand up at the bottom. 
Not a lot of room in there, so we've got to keep the sanding strokes a lot shorter. Stop and check. Don't just keep sanding because you'll go further than you think. Once you're happy, hit it up with the buffer. Both sides. Job done. And there we go. And that is basically it. Pick it off what you want. In the thinnies, you've got your... Um, 180 in the white, 240 black, uh, white core. So black sander course with the white core is the uh, 240. We then got the 400 with the yellow core, the 800 with the orange, the 1200 smoother with the white core again, our thinny um, 220 sponge, and our two thinny buffers as well. So that's explaining all the grades and grits, their use, how they should be used, and when to use them. You will learn and pick and choose your favorite sander as you go. And uh, like I say, you will pick which grit to use. Uh, you'll skip some grits. You can look by eye and think, you know, that's not too bad and go straight to the 800 for that. Just give it a light sand and things like that. It's as simple as that. Now, two complaints I'm gonna address. Number one, I am gonna purposely damage a sander. When you are using these, let me grab one, um, grab that one. When you're using these, support them. It's a precision tool. So hold it there, finger the back and push there. That is your sanding point, not at the end. Of course, there's gonna be times you're gonna to need to use the end. Um, I often do it on car bodies, trying to get into corners and what have you, but that's where the customizable sanders come into their own. They're a bit more easier to get into corners, but you can still use these. So if you are using this on a corner and the front keeps catching and catching and catching, eventually the paper's gonna lift. Now I was doing that really hard on my finger. It's gonna lift, it will push back, um, but once you've done that damage, it's there. So use this as your sanding point if you can, only use this as and when you need. Now, if you do get a bit of delamination at the front and it's there, I'm gonna damage it on purpose. So they are glued on very well. So you get a bit of damage like that. Come with your sprue cutters, using the wrong ones. Give it a cut and there you go. You've got a brand new point on your sander. So don't use the end unless you have to. Use this section here. Support the back of it with your finger because I see people complaining about them going here. Now, why is it going there? That's because you've allowed the sander to bend and then it's for pressure on the paper like that and caused it to stretch. It does it that side as well and you get that ripple effect. So I don't want to say it's in proper use but it kind of is. Don't let the sanders bend. You shouldn't be sanding like that. Support it. Use it. Now I've never bent one of these. There we go. All the way but I have now and it's snapped. Now these things are indestructible. Um, they're not you know they're not Superman. They are a disposable sander, so they are going to snap if you abuse them. So, if you're getting problems here on the sander, you are more than likely not supporting or using the sander properly. It's as simple as that. Now, delamination on the sponge sanders. Again, this is your sanding point. I would say a good quarter inch back from each end is your main sanding point. For me, I use this section, probably those two or three inches there the most. If you're using the end, which you can, and you will have to at some point, you are again rubbing on the edge. Now these are sponged, so they stretch. Now, it may come away from the sheet. Again, it's a sander, it's not indestructible. As long as you catch it, as it does it, and push it back on, it's back on again. If you don't catch it and you get sanding dust in there, it won't stick again. It's as simple as that. So only use the point of the sander if you really have to. Again, we've got the customizables uh, and the thinnies if you need to get into tight areas. These are more for your rounded areas, your fuselages. These areas here, that's why the center section of the sander is being used. Don't use this on the side of that very sharp point there. And again, I'm gonna try and damage the sander on purpose. Sanding the bejesus out of that and then complaining that you've ripped your sander. Because again, it's in proper use. If you need to sand away at that, use a thinny stick, use a little bit less pressure. And there you go, that does it fine. Doesn't damage the sander at all because this is more of a, a harder core. 
And again, it's something I've seen people doing. Going at it like this, sanding away, it's improper use. It's not the way to do it. So a little bit of care and thought. Sponge ones, try and use on curved surfaces. Try not use the very edge if you can. Of course, there's times when you're gonna to have to. It's a tool, it's there to be used. If it does come off, if you do get a bit of delamination, push it back on. Literally squeeze it back on and it's back on again. If you get dust in there, if you carry on, it's not gonna stick back, it's just one of those things. Again, should you wish, you can cut these. If you've got a sharp pair of scissors or a knife, you can cut them down. Cut them to any shape you want, any size, anything you want at all, the job is done and it'll be fine again. That's it. Again, with the 1200 um, 240s, it's a slightly different sander to the um, the gray one, and the paper is a little bit thinner, so a little bit more gently used. It's a thinner grade on the back of here, so it's not as coarse or as strong on both sides. Again, don't use the edges, use the center part, and again, this one, it's used exactly the same as the grey, it, it's a sponge, it's for curved areas, it's sponge to conform and allow the surface of the area to conform to the sander, or the sander to conform to the area, and allow you to not put flat spots in, and that's that. So that's it, very simple use, keep, keep, <laughs> keep them in your fingers like that, use them as a precision tool, support it, lightly sand, don't put a lot of pressure on it, they don't need a lot of pressure. Don't use them unsupported like this because they are going to snap here. It's a sander, like I say, at the end of the day. They're not indestructible. It's a disposable, um, sundry item. It's just one of those things. I know people have got these from two or three years ago. They're used regularly, uh, and they're still perfect and working well. I see some of our buffers that look like they need putting out of their misery. Um, they're filthy, they're black, but they still work because they've been used properly even though they got dirty from paint or sanding or whatever because they've been properly used they still work and they still work perfectly right so there we go hopefully that will help you a little bit um understanding what the grits are uh, how they should be used and when they should be used as well if you've got any comments or questions pop them down below on youtube and i will answer them um and quick clear up any queries you have um so hopefully that that's helped you a little bit give you a bit more confidence or understanding of why the <laughs> we have the different grit and what they use for um, and hopefully that will help you along the way so there we go uh, check out upretail.com for all our range of sanders uh, we've got a mega pack on there where you make a bit of a saving as well quite a bit of a saving and um, we sell all the packs individually go through you'll see them all plus we've got all our other UMP products on there our primers thinners cleaners airbrushes washes all sorts of stuff uh, we've got a good range of Tamiya kits now which we're adding to constantly uh, we've got more motorcycle kits in June next week. Uh, we've got loads of Tamiya tools, glues. We've got our own tools, our own speciality tools from Suji Burrito, um, so on and so forth. Loads of stuff. Go over there and have a look. Uh, and, of course, check out the Facebook page and forum, International Scale Modeler. Free to join up. Very friendly modeling site. Um, check out the Live at the Bench page for the Friday Night Live show, the Off Air Hangout group as well. And, of course, check out my poor ISN Facebook page as well for all my personal modeling work hope that video has helped today like i say if you got any questions pop them in the comments down below any queries or complaints send to sales at umpretail.com thanks for watching i'll catch you all later take care Bye bye